But actually, this whole book the was whole left book. to Hermione, yeah. Right. But the tale of the three brothers was the one where she saw the, the mark of the hallows. And so one of a limited edition of only seven yes. yeah. handwritten yes, fairy so stories so. illustrated by the author, this book is the first thing J.K. Rowling has written since the last Harry Potter novel was published. So the hairy heart, which my husband, the doctor, assures me looks nothing like a real heart. Six of these books have been given to those most closely connected to the Harry Potter books during the past 17 years. This seventh copy will be auctioned, the proceeds to help institutionalise children who are This is particularly exciting, I suppose, because so, it comes so soon book, after the last you. book. And, yes, and so indeed. this is what J.K. Rowling is doing next, isn't it? Well, it's what I've done next. Yes, so people kept saying to me, oh, you'll be glad you're having a break from writing. Of course, I wasn't having a break at all. I was, I was um, f literally writing out, because I, these are handwritten books, um, these new stories, which has been, it's been a wonderful way to say goodbye, actually. It's been great to, it's like coming up from, from a deep dive, I suppose. I've been writing about the world. It's not about Harry, Ron and Hermione, but it comes from that world. So it's been a part... Partly, I didn't expect it to be, but it's, it's been therapeutic in a way, a, a nice way to say goodbye. And the Book of Fairy Stories opens a new chapter in J.K. Rowling's charitable work. I asked her why vulnerable children in Eastern Europe became the focus of the charity she founded. I think it was the powerlessness. I think, I think that I've got a real um, terror of being powerless. And um, I could not think of any person with less of a voice, less, le more disenfranchised than um, a child with um, mental health issues or a mental illness or mentally handicapped who has been taken from their family or given by their family to an institution and then placed in a cage. I, could, I couldn't think of anyone more vulnerable um, and anyone more in need of, of an articulate voice. You are incredibly wealthy, mm -hmm. and I wanted to ask you about the connection between that wealth and your social conscience. Have you always had a very strong social conscience? I'm, I would say yes. There was this curious disassociation in my mind between the work I'd done and the money I'd got, because it, the, the reward seemed, when it came, so enormous, you know. It was quite scary in a way, and large amounts of money, though no one should ever, ever complain about having them, and I don't complain, they d I think they do bring a, cer a certain responsibility. If you're any kind of human being, then you, uh, once you've fulfilled your needs and your family's needs, then I think if you're any kind of human, you're going to think, okay, well, how do I, how do I do some good with this? And I think most people in my position would, would do that. You've just come back from a tour mm -hmm. in the States. Mm -hmm. where <laughs> You made the news in all kinds of ways, not least because you um, revealed that Dumbledore is gay. Had you always seen him as gay in your mind? Yeah, always. No one ever asked me, no one ever asked me, has he ever been in love or fallen in love? No, people were very focused on um, what happens to Harry. So I'd never been asked the direct question. And because... Uh, because I've never been asked the direct question and also because to answer it would immediately flag up um, an infatuation that happens in book seven. And I've never said it. If I'd been asked though, I would have said it, of course. Each cover of these books is unique. None will ever be published as J.K. Rowling holds the copyright. And the one which will be auctioned is relying on the considerable cachet of the Harry Potter brand. Razia Iqbal, BBC News.